Hi there, I'm Ray, and today I'm going to do a whistle stop tour of all of the books that I read in 2021. I read 67 books last year, which is the most that I've ever read, thank you Booktube, and it was quite a mixed bag of a year. I had some brilliant reads, but I also had some things which I wasn't such a huge fan of. The first book that I read was A Snowfall of Silver by Laura Wood. This was a really sweet, charming, wintry romance read. I love Laura Wood as a young adult novelist. This was really comforting, cosy, gorgeous, would highly recommend. Then I read Between the World and Me by Ta-Nehisi Coates. This was a gorgeous letter from a black American father to his child, talking about his experience of growing up black in America and his hopes and dreams of his child going through the same thing. It was really poignant and beautifully written and taught me a lot about more modern history of race relations in America. Then we had Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeleine Thane. This was one of my favourite books of the whole year. It's a family saga based mostly in China during the Cultural Revolution and I found it deeply moving, beautifully written. It explored fascinating themes themes of writing, of how we create and change history, of love, of the importance of art and culture and music, of how we define the self against an authoritarian regime. It just blew me away. I read it in a weekend and absolutely adored it. Next up we had a reread of Jane Eyre. This is probably my all-time favourite book. Jane's coming of age story is so inspiring. She is just the perfect heroine to me. I love and adore her and I find this novel gripping, beautiful, charming, fabulous. It got me into reading and got me into classic literature. I love it for that but I also love it for itself. This was followed by The Enchanted Castle by E. Nesbitt. I wasn't wild about this at the time when I listened to it but I've come to appreciate it more afterwards. E. Nesbitt is a really creative and imaginative writer. This was a kind of fairy tale about some children who find a magic ring and the scrapes that they get into with it but it also had some really interesting observations on adult-child relationships and how children see and experience the world. I think E. Nesbitt is definitely a writer who remembers what it feels like to be a child and can portray that in a way which children will enjoy but which also as an adult is fascinating and reminds you what it was like to be a child and how bizarre and kind of alien the adult culture is in the world when you're a child. The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. This is a beautiful story of a young girl whose bitterness is cured by the tending of a garden. The Swiss Family Robinson by Johann David Weiss. The narrator narrated it in a way which I found really comedic and I was kind of laughing at it more than with it. This is not a very good book, it has definitely dated. It's the story of a family who get washed up on a desert island and basically set out to colonise it. Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rene Edo Lodge. This was a really interesting look at black history in the UK and at current race relations. I found it a really worthwhile and interesting read. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. This was a weird, quite a wacky weird book about a guy who goes and lives with someone else in a submarine under the sea and sails around the world. There are no female characters in this book. Um, I'm not quite sure what I think of it. I don't think I'll read anything else by Jules Verne, but I'm glad that I've read one. White Fang by Jack London. This is one that I rated really low at the time, but which has actually stayed with me a lot since I read it. It's the story of a dog which is half wolf that's born in the wild and gradually becomes tamed by the humans who look after it. Similar to Call of the Wild, there is a lot of animal abuse in this book. The dog's life is traumatic to say the least, and it was also a bit racist, so there was a lot to dislike in it. However, I did think that London's writing was really beautiful and the way that he explored how animals are and tries to express an animal's thought process in a way that doesn't anthropomorphize them, I thought was really interestingly done and effective. Hetty Feather by Jacqueline Wilson. This blew me away. It was so much better than I expected it was going to be. It's a story of an orphan girl called Hetty Feather who grows up in the Foundling Hospital in London and it was a really, really great children's historical fiction. Loved Hetty, loved the story, was delighted by this book. I immediately moved on to Sapphire Battersea, which follows Hattie's life after she leaves the Foundling Hospital. This was equally as good, if not better. I love this one too. It looks at her life in service, the hardships that she faces, the injustice of the fact that she isn't granted access to the kind of life that somebody of higher birth would have had. Hattie's just a really lovable character and the plot, again, was great and gripping. Third book in the series, Emerald Star. I didn't love this as much as the first two. I wasn't such a fan of where the plot went. However, I did still enjoy it overall. The Making of Marchioness by Frances Hodgson Burnett. Parts one and two. Part one was this wonderful, charming, funny country house romance, which I adored. And I think had it just been that book alone, it would have been a 4.5 five-star read for me. Part two 
Was this a weird thriller thing? I did not enjoy the second part. I found it a bit too dated in ways that felt uncomfortable. The use of racist stereotypes in it was not great. But like I mentioned, part one was just charming, witty, wonderful. So there was a lot that I enjoyed in this novel. However, overall it did not live up to my expectations of it, given how much I love Burnett's children's writing. The Mother of the Brontes, Where Maria Met Patrick. This was a fascinating biography of the Brontes' mother, who I knew absolutely nothing about, and I'm really glad that she was given a voice. There was a beautiful love letter that she wrote to the Brontes' father in here, and it just felt like you were with her in the room. There was some of this which I found a bit of a drag, but overall it was worthwhile reading if you're a fan of the Brontes. Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. People really like this, and I did not. It was a man saying over and over again that nothing matters because we're going to die. A Song of Raids and Ruin by Rosanne Brown. This was a fun YA fantasy which I read on holiday. Childhood Boyhood Youth by Leo Tolstoy. This was the story of a wealthy young aristocrat growing up in Russia during the 1800s. There was a lot to like in here, but I hadn't realized going into it that it's not actually finished, and so yeah, it kind of left you feeling a bit Incomplete. We Should All Be Feminist by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. This is really, really short. I had not anticipated how short it was. You can read it in like an hour. It's just a short essay on why we should all be feminists. There's some good quotable stuff in here, but she actually gave it as a lecture, and I think I would probably have enjoyed it more had I heard her presenting it rather than just reading the words on the page. Diamond by Jacqueline Wilson. This is the fourth out of the five books in the Hetty Feather series, which actually takes a different character as a protagonist. It took me a long time to get over how annoyed I was at the the fact that Hetty was no longer the protagonist. However, looking back on this, there was quite a lot in it that I enjoyed. And I think had I read it as a child, I would really have enjoyed this one. It's a story of a young girl who gets sold to the circus by her father and her experiences of hardship, but also of love and friendship that she has within that circus community. The Cashmere Shawl by Rosie Thomas. This was a women's commercial historical fiction and I was just in the mood for it when I read it and really enjoyed it because of that. I don't think it was anything particularly special, but it was a nice read about a missionary woman living in India during the Second World War. War. The Yellow Bird Sings by Jennifer Rosner. This was a really gripping World War II story about a Jewish Polish woman and the lengths to which she had to go in order to try and protect her child from the Nazis. Little Stars by Jacqueline Wilson. This was the last book in the Hetty Feather series and I really loved it. The plot went in a direction that I wanted it to go in and I just feel really happy that I found this series this year. They brought me a lot of joy and escapism. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. Glad that I read this, but it wasn't really my thing. Quite fable, fairy tale esque probably aimed at slightly younger children than a lot of the children's fiction that I really enjoy reading. The Big Sleep by Raymond Chandler. I really enjoyed this. I listened to it on audiobook. I think it's called the like hard-boiled thriller genre or something like that. It was very male, a bit misogynistic, but also kind of brilliant and I actually thoroughly enjoyed this. Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. This is a beautiful, poignant novel about a family who have to leave their homes and travel to California as economic migrants. I think a lot of the themes, and in particular the way that the family are treated, is incredibly relevant in the modern day. I found this very moving, very beautiful, heavy with symbolism, and definitely a classic for a reason. Titus Grown by Mervyn Peake. This is the first in the Gormenghast trilogy, which I feel like I've gone on and on about this year. It's a book set in this ancient crumbling castle, which is kind of a world unto itself called Gormenghast. A new heir has been born, and it's about the politics that goes on in the castle. There's just absolutely wonderful, quite Dickensian-esque characters in here. It's very bizarre, but brilliant. When Calls the Heart by Jeanette Oak. This was a Christian romance book and it was really charming and sweet. I enjoyed it a lot. Unfortunately, carrying on with the series was less of a success. The next one, When Comes the Spring, was really dated in many of the worst ways and there is a whole chapter dedicated to proving the point that husbands always know better than their wives and wives should be obedient. That kind of gives you a bit of a clue as to the way that the book felt. Wasn't a fan. But I did go on to read the next one because I'd enjoyed the first one so much, honestly, and I kind of felt fond of the characters, even though I also found so much in the books that I didn't like. This next one was a little bit better, but to be honest, still not that great. A lot of the things that I'd enjoyed in the earlier books just weren't there anymore. However, there was a plot point that I really, really wanted to happen to the extent that I read the fourth book in the series uh, and the final, no, not the final book, but at this point I decided I really needed to give up. This was awful. White saviour complex in a book. The Memory of Love by Amanata Fauna finished off a really dire patch of reading in my year. This is set in Sierra Leone and it was basically a load of boring men talking about their creepy obsessions with women 
um, in a way that was presented as love. Then, fortunately, things turned around for the better with The Souls of Black Folk by W.E.B. Du Bois. This is a collection of essays about race relations in America that was written at the turn of the century, so the end of the 1800s into the 1900s. Du Bois writes with dignity, power, and beautiful prose. I felt honestly moved and humbled to be in the presence of his words and of the soul of such a good man through his writing. A Sky Painted Gold by Laura Wood. This is kind of like the summertime version of A Snowfall of Silver. It's about a young girl who makes friends with some really rich people during the Roaring Twenties in Cornwall and the summer that she spends with them, the romances that she has. It was really charming, witty, enjoyable. Again, good old Laura Wood. Then my read or kind of reread, I sort of read them when I was a child, but let's just go with read, of Lord of the Rings, starting off with The Fellowship of the Ring. This was my favourite of the three, actually. A really beautifully written quest story with an incredibly memorable setting. Followed by The Two Towers, I'm not such a fan of all the battle type scenes in the books. I really like them in the films, but in the books less so. However, still some fabulous, incredibly imaginative characters in here, and I'm really glad that I reread these books. Finishing off with The Return of the King, the conclusion to the trilogy, and my favourite thing about this book is that there's actually quite a lot of post-quest stuff which happens in the book that I had totally forgotten about and really enjoyed. Then we had Gormenghast by Mervyn Peake, the second book in his Gormenghast trilogy, and by far my favourite. This is one of the best things I've ever read. Plot, character, writing and setting, all of them were flawless. This was an absolute work of genius and... Oh, I'm so glad I've read it. A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce. I probably didn't give this the attention that it deserved because I listened to it as an audiobook often while I was driving or doing other things in the background. I didn't really love it. The writing was beautiful, but I just didn't ever really get into it or care about any of the characters. I think I would enjoy it if I studied it, but as just a read for fun, I wasn't a big fan. Under the Hawthorne Tree by Marita Conlon McKenna. This is the first in the Children of the Famine trilogy. It's a story of three children who have to walk across Ireland during the Great Potato Famine in search of some distant relatives after both of their parents have died or disappeared. It was a fabulous piece of historical fiction for children. I absolutely adored it and thought it was very, very well done. Dear Mrs. Bird by A.J. Pierce, an enjoyable and surprisingly moving and hard-hitting book about a young girl working as a reporter during World War II. My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante was very different to what I expected it was going to be. It was a lot more angry and dark than I had anticipated, um, and I think because of that I didn't massively enjoy it, although there was a lot to admire in it. Persuasion by Jane Austen, I think this is my favourite Austen that I've ever read. It's the story of Anne Elliot and a kind of second chance romance that she has when she's in her late 20s. I just thought it was, yeah, super romantic and I really liked Anne as a character. I could identify with her quite a lot and with the changes that she makes between being a young person who's desperately trying to please other people and do the right thing for other people to being someone who is more mature and understands that she needs to do what she wants for herself rather than just kind of serving others all the time. Yours Cheerfully by A.J. Pierce. This was the second book in the Emmy Lake series. It was a lot lighter and frothier than the first one, but it explored some interesting issues about the realities and hardships of life for women on the home front during the Second World War. Wildflower Girl, second book in the Children of the Famine trilogy. This looks at one of the characters a few years after the famine has ended who emigrates to America. Again, it explored fascinating aspects of history in a way that I thought was really child appropriate and gripping. Just fabulous, this trilogy of books I've been so impressed by. The Inimitable Jeeves by P.G. Woodhouse. This was the first book in the Stephen Fry collection on Audible, which I bought. It's also the only one that I've actually read before. Really charming, witty, funny, enjoyed this a lot. Great background listening. Getting Things Done, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity by David Allen. This is a productivity book that I first read quite a few years ago and it had a really big impact on me and I found it really helpful. When I reread it this year, I I mean, I definitely realise that I have incorporated a lot of the tips from it into my daily life anyway, and they are helpful, but I also think, don't read the book, just watch a five minute summary on YouTube, it is not well written and there is so much waffle in there. Four stars for the fact that his system has helped me a lot over the course of my life. How to Pray, A Simple Guide for Normal People. Why did I give this four stars? I remember this really badly, I remember this as a book that I genuinely didn't like. Um, I think there were some things that the author said in here which I just kind of flat out disagreed with. I think I gave it four stars because I felt like it 
did exactly what it said on the tin. It kind of gave you a structure of how to pray and talked through how to do each step of that. But yeah, with the benefit of hindsight, I was not a fan. I think I'm going to change that writing. Titus Alone's third book in the Gorm and Gas trilogy. This is really weird, very different to the first two. Still beautifully written in terms of the language, but I definitely didn't enjoy it as much. And I'm sad that the trilogy didn't end with something as strong as I felt Peak's first two books were. South Riding by Winifred Holtby. This is like Middlemarch, set in a Yorkshire village in the 1930s. Carry On G's, second book in the Audible collection I'm listening to, even funnier than the first one. I was just laughing aloud the whole way through this. They are complete and utter balm to the soul, and I'm so happy to have properly discovered P.G. Woodhouse this year. Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. I read this for Victober. It was a fun and gripping read, but I was a bit question mark about the ending. A Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. This was a really beautiful fantasy coming of age story which explored the battle that we have within ourselves with our dark side. It was a very gentle and quiet novel which took me a little while to get into, but having finished it, I really appreciate it for what it did. The Salt Path by Raina Wynn. This is a story of two middle-aged people who become homeless in the UK and decide to walk along the southwest coastal path as a way of coping and coming to terms with this really drastic, difficult and unfair life circumstance. It was a fascinating look into modern homelessness in Britain and also a beautiful story about the healing power of nature and walking I would really recommend. Turning Point, How a New Generation of Dancers is Saving Ballet from Itself was a non-fiction book which looks at the condition of ballet in modern society and particularly at the kind of dark side of ballet, so problems with race, problems with misogyny, that kind of thing. I didn't feel like this book really did what I was hoping for it to do in terms of it, it felt like a very shallow exploration of these issues and it didn't really teach me anything that I wasn't already aware of. I was expecting the writer to go into a bit more analytical detail of, for example, like new choreographers who are creating things which are anti-racist or stuff like that, but it didn't really do that hardly at all. So yeah, I was quite disappointed by this one. I was really, I had really high hopes for it and it kind of didn't live up to them for me. When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. This was a really poignant memoir of a young neurosurgeon who gets diagnosed with terminal cancer and it looks at how we find meaning in life in the face of death and also really interestingly explores the idea and experience of death firstly from the perspective of a doctor and then from the perspective of a patient. Humankind, A Hopeful History by Rutger Bregman. This was a non-fiction book that argued that people really aren't so bad after all, and that we're constantly being shown these negative sides of human nature, but that's not what the evidence shows. This was really uplifting. It's kind of exactly the antidote to the negativity and cynicism of the modern world that you need today, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. The Skylark's War by Hilary McKay. This was a reread of one of my all-time favorite modern children's books. This is a historical fiction book which looks at its harrowing Clary's childhood, growing up, spending summers in Cornwall, and about the tragedy of the First World War and her experience of that, living on the home front in London. It's written and reads like a classic and I adore it. A Company of Swans by Eva Ibbotson. This one isn't one of my favourites of hers, even though it kind of ought to be because it's got ballet in it, but it was nonetheless a really charming and enjoyable read. I read it on holiday and it was a perfect holiday read about a young girl who joins a corps de ballet and travels to South America to dance with them. Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens. Dickens at his best. Aspects of the Novel by Ian Forster. This is a series of lectures that he gave on what makes a novel and what makes a novel good. I think, as I recall, I really, really enjoyed the first half and then either got a little bit lost or just wasn't so bored with what he was saying in the second half, but overall, really enjoyed it. Books promiscuously read, reading as a way of life. This was way more academic than I had anticipated. Look at what reading is and why we read and what reading can give to us. It was kind of interesting, but I found it quite heavy going and I don't feel like I got as much out of it as I could have got out of it. October October by Katya Balin. This was kind of a reminder to me that even though I think of myself as someone who loves children's fiction, sometimes children's fiction does just feel too childish and this kind of fell into that category for me. Honestly, I didn't think I would have liked this as a child either. It just had this really annoying, angry main character and I wasn't that invested in it, didn't love the plot or the writing style that much. It was fine, but I will probably be unhauling this at some point. The only reason I'm keeping it is that the cover is so nice. 21 Lessons for the 21st Century by Yuval Noah Harari. This was a really fascinating and thought-provoking book about many of the kind of philosophical issues which society is facing now to do with stuff like AI and how war might happen in the near future. Um, 
I found it really, really interesting, but I also feel like it just injected loads of anxiety into my life that I can't do anything about. So even though I gave it quite a high rating, I don't actually particularly remember with fondness my experience of reading it. I sort of felt like it was good for me. This was great though, Art Matters by Neil Gaiman, illustrated by Chris Riddell. This was just a series of short, kind of, I guess like mini essays with these gorgeous illustrations by Chris Riddell, who's an illustrator I adore. And it was a lot of inspiration about why we should create art, why it's important, and yeah, obviously why art matters. I found it really uplifting and motivating and wonderful. This is a little pick-me-up book that I would definitely reread if I was ever feeling low or uninspired. A Single Thread of Moonlight by Laura Wood. I got this for Christmas and read it in that kind of weird period of time between Christmas and New Year where you don't quite know what to do with yourself. It was good for that time period. I whizzed through it. It's a kind of Cinderella I guess it says it's it says it's like a Cinderella retelling, but I would say it's more Cinderella inspired. However, I really felt that the language and plots and insights didn't live up to her usual books. So this is probably my least favourite Laura Wood, even though I did still have a good time. Then the last book of the year, Emily of Deep Valley. This was an absolutely beautiful coming of age book about a young girl in America who is initially really upset because all her friends have gone to college and she can't go because she has to stay at home and look after her old grandfather. But it's about how she turns this negative situation around and makes a life for herself in spite of the difficult circumstances. I just adored Emily. I saw so much of myself in her and this was a beautiful, charming, sweet delight of a novel and a lovely way to end 2021. So that's everything that I read in 2021. Do let me know if you read any of these too, what you thought about them. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching, take care, and I will see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.